There's been a movement for indoor growers to begin using organic nutrients versus synthetics. The reason being is now organic nutrients have a new technology using biology to get the effects that you would get from a synthetic nutrient, but still has all the intrinsic values that an organic nutrient would have, giving you better taste, better aroma, better quality overall, but still achieving the yield that growers expect. Thank you for logging on to monstergardens.com. We have a really awesome product line that we're going to be covering today. And here we have the expert of that product line, which is Scott. Scott from Organs Only Organics. And they've produced one of the best organic nutrient lines that we've come across. So Scott, this awesome line, Nectar for the Gods. So this is where the entire nutrient line begins. Our industry is plagued with uh, calcium and magnesium deficiencies. Um, every gardener I've known has had them. Um, every garden I've seen has once come across it or is chronically fighting it. Um, first off, it's your soil. So stop asking about the nutrient lines. Go check your soil. Your salt's too high. You can't get your magnesium and you have no calcium because you use an inferior line. Our answer to CalMag deficiency is Demeter's Destiny and also Hurricane and Harvest, but Demeter's Destiny. Um, it is a calcium phosphate not derived from bone meal and we'd love to tell you what that one's derived from but only special people who come and visit us get to see what that's derived from because a lot of industry uh, leaders will probably try to steal this idea so I'm not telling you. Um, it is a great product as far as it delivers a calcium source to any nutrient line. Uh, it supports the calcium base that our nutrient line is, but most importantly, the way we extract calcium phosphate, the acids we use are chelating acids that will actually chelate magnesium naturally from your medium and deliver them to the plant in a non-metal form. So when you have a CalMag deficiency, before you run out and buy a bunch of calcium nitrate, magnesium nitrate, and a bunch of iron to make that green and look healthy again, um, test your soil and put calcium in that will chelate the magnesium out naturally and make that plant take it in through nature's way versus force feeding it like man's way. Besides the Herculean harvest, as this product moved through the country, this is the second biggest selling product across from all the people that are running the botanic here, the GHs, the house and gardens, the advanced nutrients. This is the one, one of the few products they actually add in to add in a calcium that's not nitrogen form. Awesome. Um, and they usually end up dropping the magnesium load products because they're finding they, their medium has enough magnesium to sustain life. Well, we're not a big fan of this next product. We believe in it because we make it and we know it's the best on the industry. And um, what we've done is we've made a guano tea. This was because the customers wanted guano teas. Um, this is Megamorpheus. It's a seabird guano with amino acids. Um, it's organic certified worm castings that we chelate off just the humic acid from worm castings from veggie fed worms so there's no nitrates or any of that in there no uh, toxins um, it's a highly filtered highly digested guano and worm casting tea it's for those guys who believe that worm casting teas actually or not worm casting tea, back guano teas actually increase flavor um, it's a high load of phosphate I guess that's a great thing if you Well, the beauty of bat caves is you got your bats, and then you've got this layer of shit. But right in between the bats and the layer of shit are a whole field of three high wall-to-wall -wall cockroaches. So every bat that shits on a cockroach, the cockroach eats that shit and then shits out cockroach shit, which you make guano tea out of. So really you're making guano tea out of like a good It's cockroach, cockroach tea. Now the other best part about that is um, every time we extract an entire cave of guano, Nine out of ten of these manufacturers don't care how they get it, how it's done, how it's manufactured or processed. Give me the damn back guano so they bash out the side of the cave walls, extracting all the guano out with front loaders, leaving all those bats to never come home again, and then they die because they don't have homes. They don't recolonize with other bats. If they don't say bat conservancy on there, if they're not paying a huge amount of money to protect the bat conservancy in this world, they're part of the problem in this country, in this world. So Mexico right now is just a big hillside of smashed in sidewalls where they extract as much guano as they can and they go into the next cave. We're all about to be in a lot of trouble between the bees and the bats. I mean, those are two major elements in our, our ecosystem that kind of keep us humans comfortable. And in Monster Gardens, we really favor you seabird guano because it's sustainable. 
We do not believe bat guano is something that is going to do anything unique for your plants in regards to other guanos. And you're just putting in salt, so there's really no benefit to bat guano will not release its salt. <laughs> seabird lets go of the salt, brother, yeah. and that's why we like it. No salt, seabird shit. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, it's we don't really promote it. It's made for the gardener, the guys who needed the guano tea. There it is. It's for you. It's, it's one of those uh, weird parts of the industry where things have been latched on and thought to be so unique and yeah. such a, 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 a cornerstone to the production, yet it's... You know, 1980? Fucking A. You're on something. This is the shit, literally and figuratively. But now, no, nah, I'm just over. Um, we understand that organs only, that at the end of the plant's life cycle, uh, we have just a very short period of time to get the essence and the... Um, aesthetics out of that plant that we really spent all that time money and energy to try to get naturally in fall as a crop starts to go through fall it actually translocates all the sugars that the chlorophyll has created during its season and translocates them into the fruit to sweeten them up and make them more desirable we in indoor gardening scene rarely get through the actual fall cycle of a plant's life we run them through when they're done they're often predominantly still green, they haven't started to yellow, they haven't moved any of that sugar that you've spent all that time and energy creating. If you're that guy, we've made you photosynthetic sugar in a bottle. It's 100% translocation, it will go through the roots to the tip of the plant, your plant will direct this wherever it needs to go. We use it um, for many reasons, and the first one is to finish off that product. It adds tons of flavors, tons of finished uh, uh, basically, it takes all that sugar from the root zone, drives it straight up through the plant into the fruit, um, and then it helps secrete out the resins, the oils, um, and the intensity of the flavor. Um, it also helps kind of curb any of that chlorophyll flavor that may have stuck around from any nitrogen or any type of nitrate that you've pumped into that plant through that time. This helps put a curve onto that bitterness. If you're running our line, you'll never have to worry about that. You can just sweeten them up at the end of this. I use this as a micro tea compost starter. I use it as a food source instead of molasses. Um, after we started making this and doing biological uh, tests through microscopes, finding out what the carbon from molasses versus the digested carbons. Um, molasses carbon is huge. It's a super complex long chain of sugars uh, into a microscopic organism. It's a lead blanket. So when you're molassesing the top of your plants and you're wondering why you have to keep re-inoculating your mycorrhiza that you spent $300 a pound on, it's because you're choking them with a huge carbon chain that they can't possibly break down. So this is a pre-digested version of the same sugar. It's just digested into small bites. It speeds up compost. For the cellular level or for the microbial level? Well, the microbial level, we know the carbohydrates feed the microbes, but yeah. or the microbes be feed off of, but but what does it do for the plant? It's the energy, it's the life force, it's what the plant has to create through chlorophyll to create the energy to grow and be healthy and strong. So if you have the if if you're not producing the right type of sugar through the vegetation and through the foliage, you have to have some form of sugar in the right form of sugar. Um, whether it's dextrose, dextrose sucrose, that helps that uh, translocation of nutrients and the availability of nutrients through energy inside the plant. Versus uh, blackstrap molasses. It's, it's like pouring black tar on top of a root zone and hoping that they can suck up some micronutrients. You're basically feeding the biological activity, but you're not feeding much in the plant when you're using a molasses. You're not feeding the plant at all. It can't be eaten, it's too big. You are literally waiting for the microbes to break that down. So if you do multiple dilutions of that, you're end up gonna just choke out your mycorrhizal field or your microbial field from too much. So the sucrose and glucose are really gonna be the, the, the products that the plant's gonna assimilate and Instantly. utilize. Yeah, you could foliar feed this. Would the microbes feed off of the sucrose and glucose? They do it like it's cracking a ghetto, my friend. What the hell are we using molasses for? You know, I used to use it all the time until I wondered why my yield wasn't what it's supposed to be. And what I found out was I was killing the mycorrhiza that I've colonized throughout my whole time. I was choking it out for that last 10 days. Wow. And. They're huge on delivery for the, the last level of calcium and uh, sugar uptake. So take care of your mycorrhiza and stop choking it with a lead blanket of molasses. Thank you. We appreciate that. Moving on to the pro level of the line, 
Um, this doesn't necessarily make you a pro. It doesn't make you more advanced than the advanced guy and certainly no better than the basic guy. Um, every plant has its own needs. Every gardener has its own style. It has been brought to our attention in drier climates, uh, drier, hotter rooms, uh, places where the uh, environment has a tendency to dry up the medium quicker than normal. Um, we've had a lot of requests for a wetting agent that's natural that can be placed into the medium so that nutrients won't just rush right through the, the soil and out, of, out into the saucers or floor or tray or whatever you use. Um, so we came up with a uh, liquid yucca. Um, no longer unique. Six years ago when we made this, it was quite unique. And today now everybody and their brother makes a liquid yucca. Um, basically, I can tell you what the benefits are. Um, the nice thing about yucca is it's a saponin, um, very similar to like a soap. Uh, it creates bubbles when agitated. You don't want to put that in your compost teas with an air stone because you will have a giant frothy head. Um, but what we found was mycorrhiza fungi really, really like the saponins because they have a tendency to create little, uh, as I would say, an M&M chocolate cover coating around each one of those little elements in the other bottles sticks them to the nutrients so that your mycorrhiza fields can tap into these little held food nutrient bubbles, absorb those in and wait for the signals for your plants to translocate or uh, exchange waste for waste. Mycorrhiza fields are just one giant um, digester and they never force feed your plant, they deliver what the plant calls for. That's what you call the perfect symbiotic relationship. It helps rehydrate uh, your mediums, I know cocoa fiber, when moist, doesn't want to let go of water, but when dry, it will not absorb water. It's hydrophobic. Peat moss is the same way. If you ever let your medium go beyond moist to a dry state, it's really hard to get it uh, to take that water back in into the actual medium. This will help speed up that process uh, and hold your nutrients in so you're not pouring valuable nutrients down the side walls of your containers and out away from the garden. I never, ever, ever recommend watering the tray up to rehydrate. Um, you're just pushing salts up further and deeper into that medium, which will make uh, a couple weeks from now make it really hard to get them back out. So always try to rehydrate from the top. So you're not a big fan of saucers? I'm a fan of saucers as long as it's f catching something freely and it's raised above the saucer. Right. It's a foliar wetting agent for bug sprays, for nutrients. Um, can it be used with every watering with the nutrient line? It certainly can. Do you prefer it that way? Um, I use a lot of cocoa, so I do prefer using it in every feeding. Um, those who are using more of a peat-based soil generally use very little of it. Beautiful. So, depends on your soil, your style, and whether or not you encourage my, uh, mycorrhizic growth. If you're trying to, uh, this is Poseidon's Zion. Oh. Now spelled with an I, so don't let it confuse you when you see it in your local retailer and it's spelled with an I. It was once with a Y, but that's a no-no in California and Oregon. Um, Poseidon's Zyme is our liquid sea kelp. Uh, it's North Atlantic. It's a digest, um, very similar to every single other liquid seaweed in the industry. Nothing really special other than the amino acids that we add to that. Um, it's liquid seaweed. Buy ours, buy nitrozyme by MexiCrop. Which brings us to our last little additive, which is a, a unique product in the industry. I'm pretty sure I've yet to see another one quite like it. It's a liquid fish oil meal. Um, it came about from us because we were uh, in a small little alternative culture in Oregon where people have a lot of vegetarian and vegan plants or believe that fish are less intelligent than cattle. Um, one way or the other, uh, they wanted us to make a calcium rich bone meal that wasn't from a land mammal, so we came up with the fish bone. Triton's trawl is a digested cartilage form of calcium phosphate. Um, really unique, however, it doesn't have the same bone structure or the same rock structure as Herculean Harvest has, where it's going to build your fruit with an actual rock uh, substance. This one, being a cartilage, it has more of an amino acid base. And an amino acid that isn't part of the land race. There's no hooved animals that have that same amino acid chain. What we discovered with Triton's Trawl is its finished product was more colorful, more aromatic. Um, it had a, 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 an aesthetic pleasingness to it that was just next to nothing. You mean in regards to switching out for the bone meal? For the um, well, by itself, it made a really small flower that had a ton of everything else. Okay. Um, so we felt bad for the guy. He was happy. He's like, great, I got 
really nice looking stuff. It still is pathetically small, and I laughed at it and said, that's worthless, you should really grow with bone meal. Um, so we took the same product and we handed it to our biggest bone meal guys and said, do a two to one, two bones to one Triton, or a three to one, just let's see what this will do on this level. Well, we got bigger and healthier and stronger fruit from the Herculean, but the most impressive thing was the colors that came out at the end from the amino acids from fish cartilage were next to nothing. And so most people that weren't trying the Triton's Shawl then saw the finished product with the blend of the two, and these two just go hand in hand towards the end of uh, flowering. So you recommend the Triton Shawl for? I personally use it in the last two weeks as Part of my finishing um, and it's just to enhance everything that that plant is supposed to be if it has a certain name that it describes a color or a smell or a flavor this amino acid somehow and this is where we're still trying to uh, scientifically find out what this amino acid does in the plant tissue and why it creates the things it creates um, all naturally dried but i think it's in the digestion method that we use Again, we put full power in this one as well, the uh, pure bioag fulvic acid. Um, I'm pretty sure that has something to do with it, but it is, it is a, uh, a heck of a finisher, and you don't taste fish at the end. Awesome. Oh, now to the last of the additives. To me, this product is kind of our driver. This is Bloom Chaos. Um, depending on what state you're in, it's got a bunch of stuff or it has nothing in it. Um, what do you mean what's on the label? Exactly. Well, and pretty much anywhere that it's, that it's not on the label. Um, and without going too far into it, uh, all I can say, it is the driving force to the nutrient line. It is a calcium facilitator, and being a calcium based line, when you spray that, you have to be feeding your plants. If you're not feeding your plants while you're spraying that, you will notice a a deficiency within 12 hours. Um, this demands calcium in the plant when it's being sprayed. If there is no calcium there, you will start to see a clawing, you'll start to see twisting, curly cueing, CalMag deficiencies, potassium deficiencies. All these deficiencies you think are deficiencies, they're really just the plant's inability to take them up because when you spray that, you need to have calcium delivery of all those elements. Um, we promote this as a foliar spray during veg. Um, as much as every day, twice a day, down to once a week. Um, I think for best results, every other day minimally, what you're going to see in the vegetative side is uh, stronger stacking, sh shorter internodal spacing, bushier plants that are healthier and stronger with thick solid stems, and then when they switch over into the bloom cycle and they begin to stretch towards that red light, um, this will help promote the flower size, the flower set, and when the fruit starts to set and you start watering it into your solution and encourage every feeding to include that into your feed, um, it will facilitate that calcium to be brought up into that fruit much faster. So if you're driving for weight, if your whole game is just for yield, this is the only thing that's gonna get you there with our line, is this balanced with the Herculean harvest. The Bloom Chaos, as he stated, used on the at the root zone as well, even though Monster Garden is really promoted as a foliar product. This is actually some information he's given us for the first time, which is on the feed chart it says use it the week be right before your flush. Um, but what Scott's talking about is actually using it throughout the flower cycle, um, using a, what would you recommend, maybe one teaspoon per gallon? <clears throat> one teaspoon, and depending on the variety, up to a tablespoon. But basically the more of this you push, the more of this you have to have. And if you're going to use the Bloom Cast as a foliar application and they're not using anything else in your line, you'd recommend that they've been utilizing a calcium supplement. They will need it, and not in nitrogen form because you will not like the results of a calcium nitrate following in the Bloom Chaos because the nitrate will create a thicker, uh, thinner cell wall which will have a greater tendency to rupture and leak and then create a nice, uh, what most people would say is a potassium burn. It's really just weak cell structure that's rupturing in the plant. And when they rupture, they rot. So don't use calcium nitrate with this product. Use a calcium phosphate or a calcium bicarbonate product like our pH. CalMag Plus is a calcium nitrate, isn't it? I think every single CalMag in the industry is a calcium nitrate, magnesium nitrate. So, you know, nothing like being in the fourth week of flour and pumping them full of nitrogen, which I never understood that. 
Our pH up is definitely unique to the industry because it's nanoized limestone that's solubilized. So it is pure rock in liquid form. Um, your plants love it. And then the nice thing, because it is still in a rock form, anything that doesn't get absorbed or fix the pH of the actual nutrient solution will sit in the medium and uh, prevent acid leaching from the organic mass as it's being broken down from microbes. That breakdown or the secretion is gonna be an acid or a salt. Um, Olympus Up prevents pH drift into the fives because it's always combating acids as it's being broken down. Um, biggest difference there. Are you guys the only company on the market that has a natural pH up and down? Because I haven't seen many others. Uh, natural in the aspect of um, safe and usable, yes. Wow. Um, we've taken, what's odd, this was made for koi ponds to remove algae clarify water and buffer the pH of a koi pond. The guy, Frank, who makes this stuff or who designed it had a koi pond in his backyard and he was sick of doing the micro treatment. So he just made a pH up out of limestone, puts in four caps per 100 gallons, it clears a whistle and no string algae, no seaweeds growing in his little ponds. Original four pack, um, it was our base grow bloom, our catalyst with the bloom enhancement. Um, they're all very effective. They're all super digested and ready to go and available for the plant to use. So originally, when our customers were looking for a better organic nutrient line, they didn't want something that was all stabilized with salts. They wanted something that was available not only to the plant, but also a microbial field in the soil. Um, we kind of broke it all down. We started making things that we uh, consider a digest, a hydrolysate digest or an enzymatic digest. So to start off, I'm gonna do some magic. It's a 252. Our nitrogen comes from a protein hydrolysate form. It's the simplest form of protein we can strip off of feather meal. Um, it is the most gentle form of nitrogen you can put into a plant. Very hard to burn, very hard to get it to stress the plant out or stretch the plant out from a nitrogen uh, growth. Um, in this product, we use all sorts of different uh, meals. Um, we use some soybean meal, feather meal, we use a lot of bone, a bunch of yeast for microbial activity, tons of worm castings, humic acid made by BioAg, um, which is the full power people. It's our grow formula, basically. It's a 252, um, aggressive for growth, gentle on the microbes, gentle on your mycorrhiza. All right, Scott, so I look at a lot of grow labels and I see this term, it's urea nitrogen. Can you explain to us some differences of the nitrogen that's derived in your line versus other lines that have this urea nitrogen. Urea nitrogens or your high nitrates are usually really high in salts. Um, they're high in water molecules. They promote growth and that's it. Not health, not strength, not cell structure. They promote water intake into the plant. Urea is probably the worst form of nitrogen you can give a plant, um, especially if you're pest uh, susceptible to pests or molds or mildews, those are actually feeding those problems in your garden. We chose not to use any form of salt or any form of uh, nitrate or urea when generating or uh, manufacturing these products. Organic lime, the nitrogen typically has to take some time in order for the plant to be able to assimilate it. Um, is there any difference with your organic nutrient versus other organic nutrients that people might have seen on the market in regards to how flat, fast the plant can get access to it and assimilate it? Yeah, uh, great question. I think the nitrogen, basically, all nitrogen can be fixed in the plant naturally. The healthier that plant is, the more it's gonna be able to take up those type of nutrients. What we do is we base everything that we uh, have created on a calcium molecule. Um, through chemistry, calcium is the most active element that we can put into a plant. It carries the most nutrients into a plant and creates the most bonds with other elements in the soil to become available for the plant. Um, we've chosen that protein version of nitrogen um, and all through extraction off of the feathers because it's A, the simplest nitrogen molecule we can get naturally and so available. So it does not need to be broken down. You can foliar feed it, it can be immediately absorbed into the plant. Um, it, it, it's one of the most unique nitrogens available to us. And it comes from an animal protein, so you're getting a little bit faster acting than if, let's say, if you were to use like an alfalfa or you know some form of plant material nitrogen-based protein. Um, so to us, it's getting it in there salt-free and high energy-free.
The next one would be what we would have called our base bloom, which is Gaia Mania. Um, it's really strong in bone meal. That's what we get the 151 off of that. The 5% is from a bone meal called calcium phosphate. Um, the unique thing here is uh, we break all of our meals down. Um, there's a lot of the similar ingredients between the two. The difference is the concentration loads between them. Um, this one it carries a way higher phosphate load in the, in the aspect of bone meals. Um, and this one uses a lot more worm castings for the microbial and the humic extraction we get off of worm casting. So it's a great stimulator. It's a, um, I call it a vitamin B12 shot for your plants. Um, if you have something stressed out, this definitely helps them bring them back into a healthier state. Um, one of the key components to this one would be the, um, the chicken livers that we digest to make this product. Um, it has a very interesting uh, vitamin load, enzyme load, um, and it just brings into the health of the plant. You know, it's a basic grow bloom formula, um, very simple, very natural. Um, and you, the nice thing about them is you're never going to get the elongation and the stretching of it. You're going to get uh, compact, heavily branching, compact growth uh, with really strong cellular structure. Um, it's a, a basically just a simple bloom. Chemist who designed this, Frank Juan, he made this as his standalone nutrient for people who just wanted to add a couple capsules into a gallon. Um, great success from just that, but from that we've evolved into uh, fine tuning each and every one of the different aspects of the plant's growth and then created something just for that process. So, so you, you said this is pretty much derived from chicken livers. Is that um, one uh, of the active ingredients? That's one of the active ingredients. Yeah. And the chicken livers promote, it's, it's a protein based. It's protein and enzyme and vitamins. And that's the, there's so many vitamins in chicken livers, um, vitamins A, B, C, E, and B2 and B12. So to be able to extract that out and put it into a solution where the plant can uptake it through a calcium load they go into the plant and, and generate overall big health. Okay, so we've got pretty much the, those are the main food supplements other than the next one, which is the Herculean Harvest. Would you consider that the last food supplement or major food supplement in the? <laughs> Definitely, I mean, if I had to pick one product out of the entire line to use all the time, start to finish, would be the Herculean Harvest liquid bone meal. Um, it's really unique to the industry as far as availability. It is a um, pure liquid bone digested with a fulvic acid extraction. Um, we basically break down this product into its finest protein and calcium phosphate form, down to its finest form and powder. We fill the tank with that and acid, um, fulvic acid, and wait for the digestion to occur. This takes eight weeks to process through a tank system. We've gotten the same fulvics and humix as the rest of the industry. We've searched high and low, and quality is not there. Um, we got in touch with the folks at BioAg, ran tests and samples of all their product line, and we've never seen anything cleaner, more uh, bioactive, uh, more readily available, and then when it hits calcium phosphate, or our calcium line, it is outstanding at the results of uh, digestion it does. Because of their enzymatic digestion here, it speeds up our process and digesting the bone meal for uh, the bottles. We've been in the industry long enough, we've tried every product. We get really frustrated at the end of each day when we can't figure out why my quality's not there, my yield's not there. You know, plant health is plant health, and if you can't give them exactly what that plant needs, you're just cheating yourself in that plant. Um, to us, it's, we cut no corners. It is a, it's not a cheap venture for us to create what we create. Um, but it's a passion and, it, and it's being able to stand behind a product. So not only um, the importance of Herculean Harvest, you'll see it in our feeding schedule. It is start to finish. Um, we don't believe that this 010 is going to promote flowering early. It's not going to trigger your plant to do anything it's not supposed to do at the time. But it's offering the most available form of calcium for your plant to produce its cells as it grows all the time. The number one element that a plant needs for growth and health is calcium. It's the biggest thing in all living forms is calcium. And our industry lacks calcium. This start to finish, even with any other line that you'd be using, whether it's Botanicare, Advanced, whatever you decide, calcium is going to be your best friend and make that a better plant. Scott, 
Yeah. What do you use as your nutrient flushing solution at the very end of your cycle with Nectar for the Gods? I use Herculean Harvest. Uh, I use the liquid bone meal, uh, pH adjusted with the Olympus Up. Um, I do that because calcium phosphate from the bones will actually create a bond with the sodium inside the, the medium or whatever medium you're using. Um, that bond will lock up the salt, create a new compound that will tie up in the medium waiting for a microbe to come through, consuming the calcium, releasing that sodium as a molecule, whether it's a protein, an enzyme, or an acid. The other major thing on flushing at the end is instead of pumping water into your fruit for the last seven days, trying to eliminate a flavor that you can't possibly get rid of, um, bone meal will continue to fill your fruit with a rock. Bone is a rock, limestone's a rock, calcium in every form is a rock. So if I'm flushing with bone meal towards the end, I'm forcing rocks up into the fruit, which will then uh, fill in all the little voids inside that fruit, making it a harder, more dense, fruit at the end. The only aroma being masked is that of the chlorophyll that you grew. Instead, you're going to get the essence of what that roast should smell like. To mitigate some of the high EC or the high salt content in my medium. You'll totally get rid of the high EC, high salt content. Um, and, and the nice thing about all of that aesthetics that we look for in the final product, calcium is the driving force between that sugars and that the flavor and the aromas. So that last week, instead of trying to flush out all that magnesium nitrate you've been pumping in for the last eight to 10 weeks, um, this will kind of combat that magnesium spark or snap and dull that down with the calcium sugar. If you're using a three-part synthetic or uh, mineral-based and um, you wanted to add a calcium load into it, what I recommend to people um, is you know, feed as normal, one did every other week, minimally every two weeks, just do a bone meal flush with the pH up. That's gonna add in all the calcium that your three part doesn't have that's not in nitrogen form, so you're getting the calcium phosphates and all the calcium proteins. Um, you're desalinating the medium in that second week period, offering your plants more nutrition for the next following two weeks. Um, it'll create more aggressive growth, um, more nutrient uptake in the plant. Most importantly, your CEC will increase in your soil, the cation exchange capacity, which will then promote protein pumps in your plant's root system to start taking in more natural nutrients from the medium that, as they're being broken down. Um, so yeah, every two weeks I'd recommend doing in just a simple flush with the bone meal. The nice thing about the flush is you're desalinating, you're fixing your pH in your medium, and more importantly, you're putting calcium into the plant that it desperately needs. The stimulator, the tongue depressor for the root stomata, what allows the rest of these proteins and enzymes to actually reach into the plant and, and be allowed to be brought up. Um, Zeus juice is basically water free. Yeah. We have basically fill our tank with, again, BioAg makes a uh, liquid humic acid for us. Um, again, it comes down to that humic acid source. It's not all the same. Um, even in the same vein, you know, 100 feet to 100 feet, it's going to be a different uh, humic acid vein. So we've sourced with them, we fill up our tanks with their humic acid pure, we top it off with their fulvic acid in a pure form, and then we add in our own amino acids and vitamin load. Um, this is our catalyst. This is, um, I guess, liquid karma, if you will. We're interested in the line, we're looking for a supplement or a replacement for products such as liquid karma or fossil fuel. Um, this would be another angle at that. Um, but being in the pure humic digest. So a little different uh, delivery system. It's not a phosphoric acid wash. It's a uh, enzymatic digestion to create these humic acids. And what is the big difference there? Uh, between chemical washing and uh, enzymatic? I'm asking this for the growers at home, obviously. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> it's the bioavailability to the plant. You know, you get too many of those chemicals that are stripping off all of the minerals and elements off of humics and fulvics you're actually destroying a lot of those compounds before they can get into the plant through an acid wash. So you got you have your food and, and your vitamin complex in a plant readily available form. It's all natural, basically. Yeah, so, yeah. so you're getting the plants getting access to these elements faster than they would, and if you were building a soil blend, building your own soil like a super soil, where you're pumping in all that blood and guanos and all these 
different levels of N, P, and K. Um, the hard part there is that you're not a plant, so you don't know what day you need what element and what ingredient, and so you're stacking this whole thing up with just too much nutrition. The plant is getting whatever's soluble, and that may or may not be what it needs that day. The nice thing about taking those same exact meals that those people build in those super soils out of, we take all that same you know, organic material and we become the microbe and we digest it down so it is 100% available. And I, I wonder how long it takes for a lot of those elements to break down in the soil. And I imagine it's not happening in an eight to 12 week flowering cycle. None of them are. I mean, if you have a good organic vegetable garden outside, you're feeding in the fall for next spring and summer. I see. Because you need it to start breaking down. The guys who use green sand, I'm just, for what? Yeah, what does it take? Like yeah. how many months? 12, 14 months oh, before wow. you get any trace mineral off of that. So for those guys at home that say, you know, I'm, I'm doing it organically myself, I'm building my own soil program, know this, that these are, yes, the same NPK elements, but these are enzymatically or biologically digested, so they're plant readily available, and your plant does get access to them a lot faster when it needs it. Um, it's also probably a better balance than a lot of guys that are making their own soil blends at home, because let's just admit this, unless you have a really nice soil mixer, um, you know, there's going to be pockets of there'll things that are going to be... be veins and then you'll have to uh, make sure your calcium loads there and calcium is insoluble so good luck with that. Thank you for watching Monster Garden's Nectar for the Gods video. This is the line that will bring a quality level to your crop you have not seen before without compromising yield. Check out these products at our online store using the link below the screen.